Hey Harmony, there are a lot of really good stories that happen at our church, and a lot of times we just don't have the time to tell them all to you. We want to take this time to expand on one specifically, and uh, you might remember him from the Easter video. Uh, his name's Lee Kerr, and one thing that we really want to expand on in this video is the counseling ministry and its role in, in his story. And so today I have uh, Lee Kerr with me, and I have the pastor of Counseling Ministries, Matt Yaley. So welcome, guys. So Lee, can you tell us a little bit about what your life was like before you came to know the Lord? Chaos is probably one word I would use. Um, I started drinking when I was 14. Uh, I found the liquor cabinet at home and uh, started in on some decorative liquor bottles that we used to get from the bank and thought I kind of enjoyed it. Kind of kept on going. Beer and alcohol was always a part of my life. And I had pretty good control of it through my early 20s, but it was always there. It was always something that I had. It became more of a focal point for me. And... I began to put it before a lot of more important things than I, I should have had in life. It cost me an, an engagement. It cost me my first marriage. Uh, and then I get, found my wife, Shelly, and we got married. And it was kind of rocky because uh, I became a father, and I wasn't supposed to become a father. And I didn't know how to handle that. I, I had a testicular cancer early on in my life, and uh, I had about a 10% chance of ever having a kid. So I, you know, that was my partying days. Didn't have anything to worry about. And along comes my daughter. You know, I grew up being told a man has to be a man and be in charge and all that. And I felt like being in charge was also drinking and being manly and all that stuff. So. Uh, alcohol really started taking over when I didn't know how to be a real good father. And I used that excuse throughout most of my marriage to Shelly. And it became, all she wanted was a husband. She'd always been with the Lord and was trying to get me to come to church more often and was always trying to, uh, to get me to understand what it truly meant to be in the Word and I scoffed at it. I'd rather be drinking than, than become a good husband and father. So it finally got to a point where it became an absolute obsession for me. I drank from 3 o'clock in the morning until 9.30 at night. Um, I would go to my daughter's functions, whether it be band or sports. I'd be drunk. Um, I'd go to family things, uh, Christmas, Thanksgiving, and I'd be drunk. Shelly wanted to divorce me, so she said, we have to go to counseling. We have to go to counseling. So I thought, okay, I'll go to counseling. All right. And uh, that's when we came and I met Matt was at uh, marriage counseling. We didn't exactly hit it off real well <laughs> because I didn't want to be told what to do. I, I was not going to listen to anybody. I didn't listen to my wife. I didn't listen to my friends. I didn't, you know, I didn't want to listen. I didn't want to listen to the word. And I thought if I'm going to come here, you know, I want a quick fix. This guy's got to fix me. You know, if if God's really the God you're going to tell me he is, then why didn't he just make me stop? How did your wife convince you to, to go to counseling in the first place? I knew I had a problem. I, I literally could not get up in the morning and walk down the stairs without having alcohol. Um, I had the shakes horribly. I couldn't hold a torch. I couldn't weld without being inebriated. And I think deep down in my heart, even though it was so full of pride and everything else before God, I really did want to be better. I wanted to be a good husband, and I wanted to be a good father. And Shelly was going to divorce me, and, and I didn't want that. I didn't want to lose my wife. I didn't want to lose my daughter. And I was willing to work with her through counseling mm -hmm. to possibly make this happen. Why why counseling and not AA? I went through AA. Uh, I went through the entire program. I was going to fake it to make it, and I did. Um, I even got voted to lead the meetings. That's how good I was. But the entire 30 days I was there, I knew where two bottles were hit in the garage, and I knew I was going home to have them. AA is not the answer. You have to have a change of heart. Hmm. And that was one of the first things you told me in one of the meetings. And... Um, it really resonated with me. So, Matt, tell us tell us about your uh, first interaction with Lee. Lee was, he had been drinking, you know, lied about it, you yeah. know. But I just listened to, he's 
to a story. And I tell you, I really, um, as 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 volatile as it get, I was just like, it was just pretty intense. Yeah. Um, I really love Lee and Shelley. I develop. I just like. I really had, like, uh, like I really like this guy. If I could really, you know, if it it could just if God could just get a hold of him. But it was he was desperate. I always show up believing that God has ordained this meeting. Like for some for some miraculous reason, Lee and Shelley and I got to meet that night. And that doesn't happen by accident. And so um, it didn't go great. I didn't know if they'd ever come back. I didn't know what would happen. But but uh, they came back. Would you say that you remained optimistic after that first that first meeting? Uh, <laughs> hey, I I believe that God can do anything. And I knew that God was going to have to do something big. What he was telling me and how he was telling it, really, I walked away thinking I was tougher than that. You know, I didn't need to hear that. But believe it or not, I was thinking about what he said in the days that followed. Even though I was still drinking hard, I was thinking about you. And I was thinking about what you said because it, it struck a chord. I still can't explain it to this day, what happened in, in one of our yeah. sessions Um but Lee was really mad, and he <laughs> was fighting, and he stood up. I thought he was going to leave. You walked around, and I'd given you uh, the book, by Mark Shaw's mm-hmm. book. Heart of Addiction. Sitting right there on the, the table, and you picked it up. I don't even know where you read. You read something there, and you said, if that doesn't speak or apply to me. Yeah, I and, remember that. And it was almost like... And, like God was just speaking something. Like He was, and and that moment, it was that moment. That was a Monday night, and you you were set to say, okay, I'm going to go to the refuge. Yeah. I'm going to go get help. Yeah, Lee. A little while into counseling, uh, it was suggested that you go to a place called Refuge, right? Mm-hmm. What could you explain that to us? What was that? The Refuge is a men's gospel center recovery home in Winterset, Iowa. It, it, it's wonderful. You're com- constantly surrounded by people that care about you. Uh, you you have counseling all the time there. Uh, you're just you hear the word constantly. And it just helps so much to learn that there is a better life in, in Christ. So Matt wasn't the only positive influence in your in your life at the time. I know I know you had a few friends, but especially your wife, right? My wife was and has been yeah, <laughs> my life. And um, I didn't know how to deal with that. I had a very bad first marriage. I met Shelley and She's always been so supportive of me and loving to me, and I really didn't know how to to deal with that. Um, I'll, I'll admit it. She was she showed me more grace in the 17 years we've been married than I ever de- deserved. She never gave up on me. And you have a blackout period where two weeks you have no contact whatsoever. And I after the two weeks, I could call home on the landline. And... CJ, the counselor, kept saying, you need to talk to your wife. Well, I didn't know she had been in contact with him via text and emails and stuff. And he's like, you need to contact her. I said, she don't want to hear me. She don't want to hear from me. She don't want nothing to do with me. I was wrong. And when I did, it it was amazing uh, how supportive she was of me. And she was a big inspiration to, to make me really want to become a husband in Christ. So Matt, our counseling ministry here is still pretty young. It's about a, a couple years that we've been doing it. Um, could you kind of tell us about it? Tell us about the the status of it right now. We have eight people uh, involved, counselors trained, ready to, and they're doing counseling sessions already. Uh, four female and four male, and uh, we have people on our waiting list. Uh, I think last month there was a like a hundred and seven counseling appointments made through our counseling ministry. So God's really growing it and uh, averaging about four or five counseling appointments a day uh, through our counseling ministry. The call and the need is for for God to raise up more uh, uh, lay counselors to uh, continue to meet with folks like Lee and Shelley and and, uh, just help them 
think through biblically um, how they need to think and and apply biblical truth to the situations that they find themselves in and and really God's word is the one that transforms people's lives and and really I just feel like in Lee and Shelley's story um, God had me there I got to watch God work and transform his life and it was a privilege to have a front row seat to it. If people are interested in getting involved, how what would be their first step for doing that? The very first step would be to pray about it, but then uh, email counseling at harmonybiblechurch.org to say, hey, I'm ready, I'm interested, and we'll get back with you. There's training involved, and you might say, well, I'm not prepared. I don't know how to do that. The training will not just prepare you. Uh, in how to counsel, it will prepare your heart to be ready to counsel. And that's the great thing. Lee's been through it. Lee's uh, going to be part of our counseling ministry. And uh, God just praying that God would continue to raise up more counselors to be involved in, in this growing ministry. They got doing great things. Harmony, this is one of many amazing stories of what the Lord is doing in our church, in large part thanks to you guys. And so thank you and thank you guys for coming in.